Good morning. Today I'm going to teach you how to water your dragon fruit. Now, dragon fruit are actually epiphytic, night blooming cacti, and they're very drought tolerant once established. This plant would survive here on just rainfall alone, but it would never flower or fruit. And dragon fruit have a special adaptation, and it's called CAM, C A M, CAM photosynthesis. And what that basically means is that their stomata will open at night. So in here, the stomata will open at night and they basically delay the timing. They change the timing of photosynthesis, which is amazing to me. So in Paul Thompson's book, he talks about a friend that was using drip irrigation and having great success. So. I use drip irrigation and I water during the growing season every other day just for a short duration in the evening because the best time to water your dragon fruit is actually around 10 o'clock after the soil cools. Now in this case I watered these recently and uh, I notice when it's time to water the soil will come dry up a bit and there will be a little gap between your pot and your soil and that means that's when I know it's time to water my dragon fruit so I don't need to water this anymore but I do want to show you I will additionally do a, a drenching and I'll use either a compost tea or just the hose water and I water it about 7 to 14 gallons per week for this 20 gallon pot now, Linda Nickerson used about five to seven gallons a week on her mature plants and said that was sufficient. So, again, I use about seven to 14 gallons of water during the growing season. Now, in the winter, I don't water at all. I only let rainfall uh, water the plants, but I do run the drip if it's going to be a frosty night because uh, wet, mo moist soil will retain more heat than dry soil. So that's a good tip. So I only water during a really cold time of year to keep the plants from freezing. All right, let me go show you in the greenhouse. All right, so here's the greenhouse. And basically this section is my rooted section. So anything rooted, whether it be grafted or not, I have them in this side of the greenhouse. And I will water them really heavily almost every day. So I usually actually use a smaller one, it takes longer, but I really want to show you how much water I like to give them. So definitely a lot of water, about every other day to every day. I would say five to seven times a week, depending on the heat and the temperature in our area. Now on the other side over here, I have the non-rooted section. So most of these are just barely getting rooted some are very hard to root, like Yellow Cross 68 or Yellow Tie. So what I will do is I'll just give them a lot of really light watering, but mostly on the plant flesh. So again, mostly on the plant flesh until they will root. And I use a bit of rooting hormone, which I hope you've seen our episode on as well. And then I'll check them every week or so. So some of them just take their time. So that's what I do, a much lighter watering on my uh, new cuttings that I'm rooting and again mostly on the plant flesh. So I hope that helps. That is how I water my dragon fruit. Hey everybody this is Paul from Rare Dragon Fruit. So this is how I water my fresh cuttings. It's kind of hard to do both so I'm not going to look at the camera right now. But uh, I just put a little bit of water on the top. Nothing too heavy. Whoops. There's X. Not too much on X definitely. For axe, I kind of put it on top of wood chips. And these other varieties, I just give them a little bit of water. So I like this one. Just about that much, twice a week. So seedlings, I keep wet every other day. Usually make sure it's moist or every day. And then with this method, it's new. But I really like it, man. I've grabbed a handful of this, and it's really moist and humid in there. So I really think this method has potential. I'm going to... Wait until it's been one week, and then we'll check at week two. But there you go. So again, that's just basic how much water I like to put on my fresh cuttings. That's about it. This one I would say I gave it a bit too much, but it's been in there longer, so it probably has some roots. So just less is more. Keep them in the shade. Keep your cuttings in the shade. 
and definitely don't overwater them. That's what most people do. Good morning, this is Paul, and today I'm going to show you how I install the Vermistera Hydro Spirals, the deep irrigation tubes, into my raised garden bed here. Now I have several varieties of dragon fruit, and this, they've been a little bit stunted in growth this season. So I'm working on improving the soil, and using these should uh, improve as well. Now the reason why you can see is that it's gonna increase water and oxygen to the root zone, and the roots are gonna go grow broader and deeper with time into your growing media or your raised garden bed. And it's gonna basically change the environment of your soil, and you're gonna add beneficial microbes here by using Vermistair's Earthworm Castings T on the right, and their earthworm castings here on the left. Now using all of these in combination should improve the growth rate of my dragon fruit varieties here. So I'm gonna add this last hydro spiral here. You can see here's the product itself. So it's made uh, out of, it's three inches wide, or in, I guess in diameter, and nine inches in length. You can see here what it's designed to do is it's anti-clogging and it's made with a recycled polyethylene plastic so it's very very sturdy very dense and it's gonna be long lasting here you can see I'm squeezing it as hard as I can not doing anything to it so let me show you how I'm gonna install it right here and what I'm gonna do next to get it into the soil and ready to use okay so let me show you how I install this so I first pull out the cap, and then I select a nice spot, and you could use an auger, but in this case I'm just going to use the shovel here, and let's do it. So I, I try not to damage the existing roots, try to be careful, so that way this will start having some benefits sooner than later. Go a little bit deeper. So that's a good depth. I want to make sure I backfill it so it's level. You can see I did damage some of the roots, nothing too my major. And there we go. Okay, so now it's vital to add gravel to this top component because it's going to prevent dust or leaf material from building up into it and clogging the holes. And you want the oxygen to increase down to the root zone. That is the main goal with this tool for a raised garden bed. So now that's also going to slow down the water into the, into the spiral so it will work as intended. So the last step is I like to use these adjustable drippers. And I use dig. There you go. And the key is that you want something, you can get 180 degree patterns if you want as well, but the key is you want something from uh, three to eight gallons per hour. So as you can see, I like to use these adjustable ones as needed. And in addition, I use some micro tubing stakes. So using those together, I set this up. Key is you want it to just kind of spread out into the hydro spider, into the hydro spiral. Excuse me. Okay, that's gonna work out well. Let's go turn on the water and check it out. But before we do, actually, let me show you what it kind of how it's gonna function. So the water is gonna go in. spirals down it's going to disperse it deeper into the soil 
awesome. In addition, I forgot to mention I can actually use Drumstar's Earthworm Casting T and apply it directly into the Hydro Spiral. And that is going to increase your beneficial microbes and fungi and those essential nutrients for your plants directly into the root zone. So that is excellent. Okay, let me go show you what it looks like with the drippers turned on. So there it is. I think that's the perfect rate in my humble opinion. So it's a little loose here. I wish I had it centered. There we go. So remember, you want to have it slow and low and let it just flow for a few hours maybe 20 to 24 gallons, I would say. So eight gallons an hour, three hours. And you're gonna get really wonderful, happy plants in a raised garden bed. And in this case with dragon fruit, you can see that the roots have already entered into the hydrospirals, which is exactly what I want with these epiphytic roots. They're gonna wanna gather those, the water and nutrients uh, directly from the hydrospiral, and then they're gonna dry out and they're gonna be really happy. So I was really pleased to see that, as well as just overall the results with these hydrospirals and how they work already. You can see here, here's one that is overflowing. So I need to adjust that because that's just not beneficial. In other words, I want more of that water to channel directly into the hydrospiral to get deeper into my raised garden bed. So there you go. Vermisteros Hydrospiral in action and the crop that they are taking care of or growing, helping to grow are different varieties of Hilo series dragon fruit. Okay, give us a like, subscribe, thanks for watching and have yourself a wonderful day.